Why Cobras Can Be Hypnotized Cobras are some of the most intimidating and dangerous snakes on the planet. Interestingly enough, they are also the snakes that are hypnotized by snake charmers who can tame and control them. But is it actually hypnosis or something else? This is Wild Facts and today we're going to tell you the story of cobras, hypnosis and snake charmers. Before we start, consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the notification bell so you're the first one to see our new video. Cobras 101 Most often, cobras are called snakes, which belong to the genus Naja, which includes about 38 different species. Snakes in this genus are called true cobras because some snakes from other genera are also called cobras, including the infamous king cobra, which in fact isn't a true cobra. All cobras are elipids, which are a family of snakes that are venomous and have two enlarged hollow fangs located at the front of the upper jaw. Another prominent feature of all cobras is that they have a neck flap which can be flattened, resulting in a hood-like appearance. It's a defense mechanism for cobras, which make them appear larger in front of their predators. Finally, all cobras can rear upwards, making them look even larger than they actually are. So what are some of the most fascinating cobra species? Indian Cobra The Indian Cobra, also known as the Spectacle Cobra, is a species of cobra that can be found in the Indian subcontinent, including countries like India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh. It's one of the most venomous snakes in the world and could kill as many as 10 adult men with a single bite that injects 250 milligrams of the venom. It's responsible for as many as 40% of identifiable snake bites in human victims, which makes it part of the big four species in India, which includes four snakes that cause most human snake bites on the Indian subcontinent. The Indian cobra is a medium-sized snake that typically ranges from 3.3 to 4.9 feet or 1 to 1.5 meters in length, but some species can reach a length of over 7 feet or 2.13 meters. Depending on its location, the color of this snake varies from tan and yellow to tan and brown. The most impressive characteristic of this species is the hood, which is incredibly large and often features eye-like markings on the back. Such a fascinating appearance makes it one of, if not the most popular snake that's hypnotized by snake charmers, but more on that later. The Indian cobra is a terrestrial snake, meaning that it spends most of its time on the ground, but it's also a good climber and if required, it can also swim. It can be found in a variety of habitats, including forests, wetlands, mountains, and even urban areas. Finally, the Indian cobra is a carnivore, preying on lizards, rodents, and birds. That said, it's not an apex predator, and one of the main natural predators of this species is the mongoose, which is immune to the cobra's venom. King Cobra The king cobra is the longest venomous snake in the world, reaching lengths of up to 19.2 feet or 5.85 meters, although the average length is between 10.4 to 13.1 feet or 3.18 to 4 meters. It's a member of the Elapidae family, just like all other cobras, but it's not a true cobra because it doesn't belong to the Naja genus. The king cobra is a terrestrial snake, which means that it prefers to spend most of its time on the ground, but it's also a good climber and swimmer. It can be found in the rainforests of India, Nepal, Myanmar, Bangladesh, Thailand, and southern China. This species is very distinctive and easily recognizable thanks to its large size and bright colors. The king cobra is black with yellow, white, or cream-colored bands along its body. The bands become narrower as they get closer to the tail. The king cobra also has a large hood which is used to make it appear larger. You could call it the apex predator of the snakes because it basically has no natural predators and is primarily preying on other snake species including pythons, green whip snakes, keelbacks, and malabar pit vipers. There's also a recorded case of a king cobra swallowing a clouded monitor lizard in Singapore. The main threat to the king cobras is us, humans, as these snakes are often killed for their meat, skin, and body parts, which are used in traditional Chinese medicine. Most interestingly, the king cobra is the only species of snake that builds nests. The female king cobra will lay between 7 and 43 eggs, with most of them hatching after an incubation period that lasts from 2 to 3 months. Egyptian Cobra The Egyptian Cobra is a species of true cobra that's found in North Africa, including countries like Egypt, Libya, Sudan, and Tunisia. On average, its length ranges between 4 to 5.9 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters, but the longest specimen ever recorded measured at 8.5 feet or 2.6 meters. 
The Egyptian cobra can be found in many different habitats, including semi-deserts, savannas, and steeps. Depending on its habitat, its coloration ranges from entirely black to different shades of brown. Some specimens exhibit a lighter underpart, which can range from a creamy white or yellow brown to gray, blue, or grayish. It's primarily a nocturnal cobra, meaning that it's mostly active at night. That said, some Egyptian cobras prefer to be active during the twilight period. In rare cases, it's even possible to spot it basking in the sun in the morning. The Egyptian cobra is one of the most venomous snakes on the continent, causing paralysis and even stopping the heart and lungs of the victim, resulting in death. Strangely enough, the venom of specimens from the north is much more potent than the venom of cobras found in the western and southern parts of Africa. This species mostly preys on toads, but it's also capable of taking down lizards, smaller snakes, and some mammals. The Science of Hypnosis Before we can talk about hypnotizing cobras, let's look at hypnosis as a whole. Hypnosis is a state of human consciousness involving focused attention and reduced peripheral awareness and an enhanced capability to respond to suggestions. There are different theories about how hypnosis works, but one of the most widely accepted theories is the disassociation theory. This theory suggests that during hypnosis, there's a split in consciousness, which allows suggestions to be accepted by the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is part of the mind that's responsible for automatic thoughts and behaviors. It's a part of the mind that we're not consciously aware of, but it still has a huge impact on our behavior. Some would argue that it's much more influential to our lives compared to our conscious minds. For example, if you're driving to work and you take the same route every day, you're not consciously thinking about which turn to take because it's already been stored in your subconscious mind. Similarly, if you're a smoker, you're not consciously thinking about lighting a cigarette because it's become automatic behavior. During hypnosis, it's believed that the connection between the conscious and subconscious mind is weakened, which allows suggestions to be accepted by the subconscious mind and enacted without conscious thought. How People Hypnotize Cobras now that we've talked about the science of hypnosis, let's talk about how people hypnotize cobras. Most people that hypnotize cobras are called snake charmers, and they're mostly found on the Indian subcontinent. Typically, a snake charmer will use a flute-like instrument called a panji to play a repetitive tune. The cobra will then begin to sway back and forth in rhythm with the music. This swaying motion is known as entrainment, and it's key to hypnotizing the cobra because it's not actually the music itself that hypnotizes the cobra, but the repetitive motion of the charmer's body and instrument. This suggests that the cobra is responding to the charmer's swaying movement rather than the music itself. As a result, most scientists argue that the snake charmers don't in fact hypnotize cobras. But what exactly is hypnosis is up for debate to this day, and regardless of how you frame it, snake charmers can charm the snakes in one way or another, resulting in a fascinating performance. In the West, snake charmers rarely use musical instruments, but rather dance in front of the snake, which produces similar results, making the snake move in rhythm. So now you know why cobras can be hypnotized.